hello. So uh, my name is Joris, and uh, like uh, Janik just told, I am the new researcher on phytopathology on onion uh, at Bayo. So today I will talk uh, uh, mostly about uh, the current status of Fusarium basal rot in onion. But first, uh, okay, which one? The other one. The other one? Ah, okay. Then this one. Does it have a pointer? No. Okay. So, uh, well, onion, it's already grown uh, uh, for a long time, already uh, for 5,000 years. And uh, we think it has been domesticated in Central Asia. Uh, but today uh, it has been grown and cultivated worldwide and it's uh, present in every kitchen. So you can also see that uh, in the global production, it, uh, the last decades it uh, rose a lot. So we have really an increase in onion production worldwide. Uh, but in green and yellow you see Europe uh, and uh, France. It's uh, not so much compared to the rest of the world, but if you look to the, the yield per hectare, you can see that uh, in Europe and especially in France, the, the yield per hectare is a lot higher compared to the rest of the world. Um, unfortunately, there is also quite a lot of diseases in onion. So very important uh, foliar diseases are, for example, stemphilium, uh, purple blotch caused by autonaria, uh, but, but also botrytis, and of course, uh, what we just heard, uh, mildew. Uh, we also have uh, diseases that are in the soil or come uh, and prevent themselves in, during storage. And very important diseases in that are, for example, neck rot, white rot, uh, pink root, but also molds like black mold and blue mold. And of course, where we, go talking, uh, where we are going to talk about right now is Fusarium basal rot. So uh, here you can see two pictures where you can really clearly uh, see the symptoms. And very typical is the, yeah, those black lines growing from the roots into the bulb, basically. Uh, the disease is mainly caused by uh, two different species of uh, Fusarium. Uh, Fusarium oxysporum, uh, SEPA, and Fusarium proliferatum. Um, yeah, uh, what they can do is they can cause up to 35% losses in the field and 75% losses during storage. Um, and they can not only attack uh, onion, it's also observed in garlic, leek, and spring onions. Uh, it's also expected that due to uh, climate change, the distribution of these diseases uh, will increase, so more regions will be affected. And it's even uh, uh, expected that the damage will be also greater. So we, we need to find a solution. And uh, to start, uh, it's very good to understand the disease. So uh, it's very valuable to know how the disease cycle of such a pathogen works. So what you can see here is that um, uh, the main inoculum of this disease is in the soil. It's really a soil-borne disease. So um, during the growing process, seeds, uh, when they are sown, they can get infected by this uh, disease, which can cause the uh, yeah, seeds that they don't germinate, or that seedlings die because you have to uh, remember the seedling phase is a really uh, vulnerable phase uh, of the onion for Visarium infection. Uh, when they survive uh, the seedling phase, they can still develop uh, a plant and a bulb, and uh, the bulb can get infected. Even though at first sight the, the onion looks all right, and, then you, and the bulb also, you put them in storage, during storage, uh, the, the fusarium can get active again and destroy the bulb. Because just like during the seedling phase, the, when the bulb is in dormant stage, they also become very susceptible to the disease. So then you can get huge losses during storage. Um, yeah. Also, 
we uh, would like to know where uh, is this disease and how is this disease distributed in the world and uh, what are we dealing actually with. So we took uh, collected isolates from across the world, uh, from uh, Bayer locations, and we performed uh, DNA sequencing on those isolates to really identify yeah, what, which species are we now actually dealing with. And uh, so when we compared the DNA uh, with each other, we found out that uh, at least two-thirds of all the isolates that we found belong to Fusarium oxysporum, but also one-third more or less to Fusarium proliferatum, indicating that both species of Fusarium are really crucial um, uh, causers of this disease. Well, then we all know this, uh, but what can we do now for uh, disease management? So it's very important to prevent introduction in the first place. Don't get it into your field. And yeah, you can maintain good field hygiene because um, it, can be, uh, it can get into your field by, for example, in contaminated tools or infected soil that's under your shoes. And it's also important to start with clean uh, yeah, starting material. Also, uh, seed coat coating might help to really uh, get the seedling over that first phase. So you want to get the plant over the seedling phase, and seed coating might protect it in the first phases of the growing season. And uh, crop rotation might uh, help, because uh, then the inoculum can decrease in the soil. Unfortunately, Fusarium uh, makes uh, these spores called chlamydiospores, which can stay in the soil for a very long time. So, yeah. Uh, so, an alternative would be to have resistant cultivars. And, yeah, that's what we're trying to do at Bayo with breeding to get more and more resistant cultivars. Uh, at Bayo, we have uh, a screen uh, where we screen um, yeah, many lines uh, for fusarium resistance, and we develop this score from zero to nine, with zero is the most susceptible and nine, the most resistant. Uh, at Bayo, in the greenhouses, um, we have this huge uh, trays where we screen like thousands of uh, seedlings for the resistance against Fusarium. So yeah, here you can really see how that looks and uh, the scale of it. And this is only one compartment. We, uh, we have more compartments where we all screen uh, yeah, thousands of lines. And in this picture, you can see clearly a difference between a resistant uh, line and a very susceptible one. Uh, well, uh, during uh, our screens, the last decades, uh, we can see that um, the total amount of lines that we screened, uh, in total, they came, became more and more resistant. So while in 2012, it was a quite nice distribution from susceptible to resistant, at the moment, we have more and more resistant lines in our pool that we are screening, indicating that yeah, it is going in the right direction. You can also see that when you look to the average of the disease, so the average of all the lines that we screen in one year, what is the average? And you can see that the average is going in the direction of getting more and more resistant. Um, yeah, so strong varieties which we are now have now. Uh, which have already been mentioned in the uh, previous uh, presentations are the high sky and the high gate. And for the future, we aim to, um, yeah, to improve this uh, fusarium resistance and maybe combine it with um, yeah, resistances against other diseases. But what is also very crucial for the future is that we increase our understanding uh, of the pathogen itself because we still have a lot to learn about this pathogen. Okay, thank you very much. So, so, thank you very much, Joris and, uh, and Voter. Um, maybe we also have time to have some, uh, some questions about, uh, about this. Yep. Um, donc merci, Joris, and merci, Voter. On a, des, on a la possibilité de donner quelques questions. Est-ce que... On a une question dans la salle. Est-ce que quelqu'un peut 
amener le micro. Merci. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Joris. I think a very good uh, presentation. Um, just a question from my side uh, is, and I think a lot of farmers have this question also sometimes, is uh, there are farmers which do not have any onion growing maybe in a field for 20 years, and still they can get fusarium. Is it a, a, a latent in the soil there so that it activates when they smell an onion, for example? Or can you give an explanation on that? Yes, that could be a possibility. So, well, I'm quite new to onion and um, uh, this fusarium, but I worked with uh, another kind of fusarium, oxysporum, which is very related to onion. Uh, there's a fusarium on banana, and they can survive for more than 20 years in the soil. And like what you say, when they yeah, smell uh, an onion or a banana, they instantly germinate and attack the plants. So that could be a possibility, yeah. It could also be a possibility that it was introduced in the field uh, without knowing it, of, of course, yeah. Thank you, Joris. Thank you, Sim. Uh, Est-ce qu'on a une autre question? Vous pouvez la poser en français. Hein. Vauteur peut, peut traduire à, à Joris sans difficulté. With elle. Oui, encore une question d'Oignon Mac. Je ne veux pas exagérer, mais vous, nous avez, vous avez attisé notre curiosité euh, avec euh, les résistances, euh, les plurirésistances, là, depuis tout à l'heure, depuis ce matin. Euh, Est-ce que vous pouvez en dire un tout petit peu plus ou c'est juste euh, on en reste là euh, alors, en termes de plus, vous, vous les connaissez des noms de variétés ou plus comment on essaie de euh, combiner les résistances euh, de, 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 ben, Est-ce qu'il y a des variétés qui sont annoncées euh, très prochainement, qui, sont, qui combinent euh, plusieurs résistances Alors là, je me tourne vers Joris. Uh, hopelijk. Ja. Uh, ja. Dat proberen ze wel. Daar werken we wel, wel aan. Ja. Uh, alors, um, on, a des, on est en train d'y travailler, à combiner les, des résistances. Uh, et c'est, mais c'est assez compliqué à faire vu qu'il faut combiner des génétiques tout en gardant les, les aspects intéressants pour chaque variété. Uh, donc, ça prend beaucoup de temps, mais. Uh, Oui, ça, ça, ça arrive et on a probablement déjà certaines. Je ne connais pas le catalogue par cœur, mais euh, oui, ça, ça arrive. Écoutez, est-ce qu'on a encore... Oui, une question dans la salle. Oui. Au niveau de la rotation, vous conseillez un, un délai d'au moins 6 ans entre deux cultures d'oignons. Est-ce que vous avez connaissance d'une culture qui pourrait être haute de, de la fusa, qui pourrait correspondre à faire euh, une culture entre les deux, qui pourrait faire le même effet que l'oignon, mais euh, sur la fusa quoi Est-ce que vous avez connaissance de ça Ja, dat zou kunnen. En we zijn nu met een project bezig, dat is Eureka genaamd. En daar doen we daar onderzoek naar om uit te vinden welke planten dat iconoculum naar beneden of omhoog brengt. Donc, euh, on n'a pas encore beaucoup de connaissances disponibles sur le sujet, mais il y a un programme qui s'appelle Eureka, euh, dont le but c'est de trouver quelles sont les plantes hautes, euh, autres que l'oignon. Euh, pour euh, ces fusariums, pour euh, à bien cartographier ben, euh, comment euh, gérer euh, cette pression de maladie. Quoi. Donc euh, prochainement, plus d'infos sur le sujet. Merci. Ben, écoutez, je pense que si on n'a pas d'autres questions, euh, je vais remercier euh, Wouter euh, et, et Yoris pour leur, leur intervention qui vient clore euh, donc, cette, euh, ce programme de, de ce matin. Merci à vous deux. Merci. 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 Merci.